welcome everyone to MedSci Hub, a channel dedicated at grade 11s and grade 12s who are doing mathematics and science. This channel will cover most of the work or actually all of the work that you guys have been doing throughout the year and actually we will try and help you pass and do well in your exams. But what we are going to do is actually the revision of the work that you guys have been doing. But the revision that 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 we are actually going to do, or how this is set up, is we are actually going to do past question papers only. Because for you to be able to do your work and to understand your work, you need to understand how the question the question paper is set up and the layout of the questions because in most cases you do the work in the classrooms you prepare for the exam you start doing the question papers you get into it into a test exam venue you get a question and it it may seem like something new because you are not aware of the layout of the exam questions so what we are going to do is we are going to tackle all the past questions all the past metric and grade 11's question papers all right we are going to start with exponents and sets so let me start by writing down all the exponential laws that you guys have been doing and the restrictions and the conditions in which you are allowed to actually use exponential laws and use your mathematical skills in solving the, the what you call the equations let me start with the first one which is a let me redo my a because it looks like a nine a to the power of zero equals one now for this as you might as well know that your a should not equal zero simply because if you if you punch if you punch in zero to the power base zero to the power of zero you will get an error on your calculator so this one is undefined it's undefined undefined another one is a raised to the power of negative n a raised to the power of negative n which can be written written as a as 1 over a to the power of n also in this case your a should not equal zero because it's undefined because it's undefined moving on to the second one a to the power of m times a to the power of n you know if the bases are the same you add the exponents so you write a to the power of m plus n and then if if we divide if we divide and we have the same base as well and we have the same base dividing you subtract your exponents you subtract your exponents another one is a over b now in this case you know you should be multiplying 
the power to the power because a is raised to the you know it's one here and then it's one here so you only multiply your base your your exponent because here it is being raised it has been raised from a power to a power right meaning you only multiply the power that has been raised to the power of your base meaning now here you will get a to the n over b to the n similarly even if you multiply even if you multiply a b is been raised everything has been raised to the power of n you multiply only the powers the powers so in this case you will get a to the n b to the n and covering the last law covering the last law is a to the m so this is the case that i'm trying to to make you guys understand a has been raised to the power of m a has been raised to the power of m so you only multiply the power to the power so it's been raised to the power of m bracket to the power of n so you don't distribute your n you don't distribute your n to the to the to the a as well you don't do that you only multiply the what you only multiply the powers the powers so in this case you will get a to the power of mn a to the power of mn now we have covered the loss which you need to know in order to solve uh, exponential expressions and one more thing you also need to learn rational exponents rational exponents well rational exponents are basically the numbers that are written as fractions with both the numerator and the denominator as as integers as integers so you will never be given an exponential expression or an exponential term where your exponent is a decimal you will only deal with fractions with the denominator and the numerator as what as integers as integers right let me try to write down some of the laws or some of the the basics that you need to know about rational exponents about rational exponents now let's say you have r to the power of n equals a and you need to write this in a radical form in a radical form right and you want to get rid of let me get my highlighter that's your first step that's your first step meaning you're going to say r equals square root of n 
square root of a and in this case your n should be greater or equals to 2 and then you have a raised to the power of 1 over n this can be written as square root of a right now let me give you an example of how this actually applies in a real question or in something that you have been asked let's say you have 4 raised to the power of 3 over 2 raised to the power of 3 over 2 and you need to write this in a radical form right you need to write this in a radical form firstly let's try to to separate this and write it as half right without changing our term meaning we are going to have 4 to the power of 3 all raised to a half right and we know a power of a half we can write it as square root meaning in this case we are going to say the square root of 4 cubed don't forget the 3 the square root of 4 cu 4 cubed you should get 4 cubed let me get my calculator 64, 64, 64, so 64, the square root of 64 should be getting an 8. So this is the application of rational exponents, one of the applications of rational exponents. Alright, let's move on to our next section. Now, one more thing that you need to know in order to solve uh, rational, in order to solve exponential expressions, you need to get your expressions or your terms into what we call the base factor, right? Let's say you get 4. Let me just write, let me, let's say 4. Let's say 4. In order to, to solve a, a exponential expression, you need to, 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 to spread it out and be able to, to actually write the terms or what you are given, what you are given here in terms of their prime basis in terms of their prime basis now four as we as we all know the prime base of four is two to the power of two so you need to know the prime basis of your your expressions in order to solve uh, the exponents and normally you get three as a prime base you will get five as a prime as a prime base you will get seven as a prime base in some cases but normally it's, you, you normally get two you, you get three and five in some cases seven so you need to know the prime you need to understand what the prime base is in order to solve uh, exponential expression now let's get to to question papers
Now, the question papers, they try to, when you get a question in an exam based on, let's say, exponents, like we are doing now, they try to, to, to actually include, to include most of the rules, most of the laws, in maybe like one or three, one or two or three questions. That's why maybe when you get a problem, you're only focusing on one thing. You need to know how to prime factorize. You need to know your laws. You need to know your rational ex exponents and how to go about in solving the problem. All right, the first question that we are going to try and tackle here is, is from grade 11 paper. Department of, of Education, Grade 11 paper. It's November 2015. 2015. November 2015. The first one says you need to simplify the following. Simplify the following. Let me write it here so that I can have more space. Two N plus two two sorry to the power of two to the power of N plus two multiplied by four to the power of N plus one all over 8 to the power of n minus 1 when you get this question the first the first thing that should come to mind is you have a 2 right and a 4 and an 8 as your basis now you need to get your basis to be the same meaning you need to find the prime basis of whatever you like you've been given there now in this case we can say leave the two as it is but then expand it by using one of the rules meaning to two to the power of n times two to the power of n times now the prime base here Two to the power of two, all been raised to n plus one, all over two to the power of three, all raised to the power of n minus one, right. 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of 2. Now let's multiply our bases, our exponents. Sorry, let's multiply our exponents. You will get 2 to the power of 2n plus 2 all over all over 2 to the power of like I said we multiply our exponents now in this case we will get 3n minus 3 now we have the same base in the numerator we have the same base in the denominator right 
so from now on it would be easy to solve this meaning we, could, we can mesh up one base and add and subtract all the exponents on top now in this case it will be 2 to the power of n 2 to the power of n let me just rewrite this plus 2 plus 2n plus another 2 moving on to the denominator to the denominator remember now we should be because now we are dividing right we should be minusing the exponents so we will get minus 3 n plus 3 now let's see let me try to get a highlighter so it's n 3 it's n n minus 3 n it's 2 positive 2 and positive 3 so the uh, the n the 2 n and the negative 3 n they cancel out so we only left with the constant is 2 plus 2 plus 3 which is 2 to the power of 7 which will give you which should be giving you 2 to the power of 7 so 128 so 128 128 128 all right let's move on to our next sum this one is taken from November 2016 paper grade grade 11 grade 11 now in this case they are asking us to solve for x solve for x we have 2 to the power of 3x plus 1 plus 2 to the power of 3x equals 12 now again the basic steps you apply your rules you look at the questions you remember your rules and you try to apply them right now let's see what we can do here we have 2 to the power of 3x times 2 to the power of 1 plus 2 to the power of 3x equals 12 equals 12 so what we need to do here you can see that we have a common factor we have a common factor right we have a common factor meaning now we can separate the 2 to the power of 3x separate separate the 2 to the power of 3x and then here we have 2 to the power of 1 so I'm gonna write the 1 again plus 1 because we have taken out we have taken out 2 to the power of 3x so here you just see 1 you should just see plus 1 
right equals 12 2 to the power of 3x equals 3 equals 12 now let's get rid of the 3 how do we do that we divide everything here on the left hand side of, the, of our equal sign and divide again here by 3 meaning we are going to have 2 to the power of 3x equals 4 equals 4 again what can we do here prime factors in this case is 2 let me write it here in this case we have 2 to the power of 3x equals 2 to the power of 2 look what we have now we have we have the same base we have the same base meaning we can drop the bases and say 3x equals 2 we only need the, the x so we're going to divide by 3 meaning your x will equal 2 thirds your x, your x will equal 2 thirds Now looking at this problem, looking at this, what do you need to know? You need to know your math, your math skills. You need to remember and apply everything that you have been taught. Here we factorized and we took out the common factor, right? Which you need to know. You need to apply all your math skills in almost every mathematical problem let's move on let's move on let's move on now they say you must simplify all right before i start there this was taken from again grade 11 grade 11 paper november 2017 november 2017 November 2017 now they say you must simplify the following simplify the following simplify the following 3 to the power of m plus 4 minus 6 to the power of 3 6 times 3 to the power of m plus 1 guys don't mistake in this as 6.3 it's not a decimal it's 6 times so don't get com confused by that even at the bottom it's 7 times times 3 to the power of m plus 2 all right let's start so let's expand this you will get 3 to the power of m times 3 to the power times 3 to the power of 4 minus 6 times 3 to the power of m times 3 to the power of 1 our denominator we have 7 times 3 to the power of m times 3 to the power of 2 right now we have oops, 
see we have three M three M in our numerator and we have three M in our denominator. Now the common mistakes that most grid levels do is you will try and cancel out what is common there but you can't do that why because your expressions are separated by what a minus or in some cases your expressions will be separated by a plus meaning do not cancel out first don't cancel out don't cancel out if your expressions are separated by plus or a minus so what do we need to, to do here since we can cancel out let's get our common factor in this case we have 3m all into 3 to the power of 4 minus 6 times 3 and then at the bottom let's leave it like that 7 times 3 to the power of m times 3 squared now going back to my first point i said you can't cancel out when your expressions are separated by a plus or a minus now in this case we managed to create multiplication right there we no longer have a plus or a minus now we have multiplication right meaning you can now try you can cancel out so let's cancel out the 3m cancels out this 3m right what are we left with we are left with 3 to the power of 4 let me try and do it on the calculator which is 81 3 to the power of 4 is 81 6 times 3 is 18 over 7 times 3 squared is 9 right so like I said here it's 81 so 81 minus 18 is 63 over 7 times 7 times 9 7 times 9 should give you 63 as well 63 divided by 63 your answer should be 1 your answer should be 1 so guys it's very important never cancel out over a plus or a minus when a plus or, or a plus or a minus separates the terms don't cancel out try to get multiplication between the terms then you can cancel out all right let's move on to our next equation now this is again from from 2017 grade 11 2017 grade 11 2017 grade 11 now we have so we all right let me see what they want us to do here they want us to solve for x again they want us to solve for x solve for x and then we are given x we are given x to the power of negative a quarter equals 8 equals 8 
Now, when you see this, what do you think about here? What can you do here? Try to get the prime base, right? So whenever, whenever you have, whenever you have a problem in front of you, a question in front, like in front of you, if you know your work, if you know what you've been taught in terms of the rules, in terms of rational exponents, at first sight, it should come to you what is the first step or what you should be doing there, right? So in this case, we have x to the power of negative 3 over 4 equals 8. First step there, let's try to prime factorize 3 over 4. Now here we have 2 to the power of negative 3. Now you need to apply your mathematical skills here. Now here, you need to get rid of this first. Get rid of this base, this exponent. Get rid of this rational exponent. How do we do that? I'm sure you guys have been taught how to tip and times. Tip and times. Tip and times. If we tip and times this is negative 4 over 3. And what you do on the left, you do on the right. Tip and times here is negative 4 over 3. So here you are only left with x because the 4 this 4 will cancel out this 4 this 3 will cancel out this 3 equals here 3 cancel, cancels out this 3 meaning you are left with 2 to the power of 4 negative don't forget the negative meaning is 2 to the power of negative 4 2 to the power of negative 4 now your x should be 1 over 2 to the power of negative 4 your x sorry sorry 2 to the power of 4 meaning your x is 1 over 16 now another thing that you guys need to do here need to understand here you only you move everything you move everything to the denominator everything is over one this is your base this is your exponent they all go to the denominator but let's say you are given 4 x to the negative 2 now if you are giving something like this you know there's an invisible one here there's an invisible one here so this one here is the one that moves to the numerator meaning everything else here moves to the bottom to the denominator everything else here moves to the denominator it's one sorry everything else moves to, moves to the denominator but Let's say you are giving it as 4x negative 2. You write it as 4 to the 4 over 2. 4 over x to the power of 2. 
so always remember how to write your your expressions because these are common mistakes that are made common mistakes that are made so can you see like i said here there's an invisible one hence we write it as 1 over 4 x squared now in this case in this case in this case this is your base this is your constant this is your base this is your constant right your constant goes to the top your base goes to the denominator in this case this is your constant which is one your one goes to the numerator everything else goes to the denominator right here yeah. constant base constant goes to the numerator everything else goes to the it goes to the denominator so beware of the brackets beware of the brackets beware of the brackets Okay, let me sorry. All right. So far, so far we have dealt with rational exponents we have dealt with some of the laws and we saw how do you apply them and i think one or two more of these of the questions let's try to tackle one or two more now this one is again taken from the november paper grade 11 solve for x so we you have 2 to the power of 2x minus 2 to the power of x equals 2 equals 2 now we have the same base as you can see but here can you see if we take our two and bring it across we can have a quadratic equation here and actually we can factorize we can try and factorize this problem here now let's do that let's say 2 to the power of 2x minus 2 to the power of x moving the 2 across will be negative 2 equals 0 now we can try to get we can factorize by determining the factors of our base here which is 2 right so let's try and factorize this we have 2 here because we are trying to get the factors of 2 equals 0 and then we have a 2 here my zero looks like a six. Right, let's try to get the factors here. I'll go with one, so sorry it's two x, it's two x, and this I'll go with negative two. So let's get let's get the factors of our base here. It's two to the power of x plus 1 equals 1 
or 2 to the power of x minus 2 equals 0 so why did I say equals 1 here it should be equals 0 equals 0 2 x to the power of x equals negative 1 or 2 to the power of negative x equals 2 now this cannot apply because we don't have the same base can you see we don't have the same base meaning your x will not be equals to 1 but here we have the same base we have the same base meaning your x only has one value which is 2 which is 2 all right we are going to move to our last sum of this session and hopefully all of this has been very helpful to you guys so let's move on to our last our last sum again from the very same paper grade 11 2017 now here they say if x equals 3 minus the square root of a over the square root of 2 and y equals 4 plus square root of a all over square root of 2 now they say determine the value of x plus y squared now you have, you have been given what your x should be equal to what your x is and what your y is so what you can simply do here is substitute what you have been given to this expression here so let's do that we have been given x s so i'm going to start with x first let me try to get my highlighter so i'm going to try with i'm going to start with sorry and let me get a different one different color i'm going to start with your x right now x is 3 minus square root of a all over square root of 2 let me get to the y right Now we have a plus sign. They say the y is 4 plus square root of a all over square root of 2. Remember everything else, everything has been squared. Everything has been squared.
now can you see our basis our denominator they are the same we have the same denominator and we have a plus sign so we can simply add these two let's add these two right let's add these two like i said it makes life a bit easier if we if you have the same if you have the same denominator meaning we can write our denominator down so here is 3 plus 4 which is 7 and then minus square root of a plus square root of a they cancel each other out they cancel each other out meaning you can just square everything else don't forget this right now here you can just times square the 7 and then square square the denominator and then square square the numerator and square the denominator meaning 7 squared which is 49 and then square root of 2 squared remember here the square root is good they, they want to cancel each other out right this square root will cancel the square root out the square root will cancel the square root out right because as we've learned in our uh, rational exponents this can be the square root of 2 can be written as 2 uh, to the power of 1 over 2 right and then it, it has all been squared and then we multiply the squares we multiply the squares a half times a two it's one hence here this square root falls off because we are going to multiply it by we are going to it has been squared this square root has been squared hence the square root falls off it's because of what we were taught right what we were taught so if it falls off it means we are only left with what with a two we are only left with a two now now we can leave our answer in this form let's leave it in third form meaning it's going to be 24 and a half 24 and a half 24 and a half now guys if you understand when and how to apply your laws how to minus and add exponents how to multiply and subtract exponents how to simplify exponential expressions and finding the uh, finding the what you call finding the prime factors you need to understand when and how to apply those, those rules if you understand those rules and you apply your normal math skills like factorization completing the square you can do the exponents those are the basic things that you need to do in order to master the exponent right we have dealt with sums that include most of the rules like in your question paper you you will get two or three questions in those two or three questions they will cover most of the work that you have done they will cover adding subtracting exponents they will cover multiplying dividing exponent you will have to find the prime basis you will have to check the 
the the exponents uh, in a fraction form irrational exponents you will find all those things in two or three questions in a question paper so you need to understand all of them in order to understand uh, exponents exponents so don't be selective in understanding exponents try to understand everything and you'll be able to do your work uh, thank you guys this is the end of our, of our lesson next week we will cover grade 12 exponents and then after that we will move on to our next section thank you very much for watching goodbye